and welcome to another RSR. Tonight I'm reviewing Trinidad and Tobago 2, Grenada 2 in Group B of 2026, CONCACAF World Cup qualifying round 2. Trinidad and Tobago at least rescue a point. Now they have no room for error in the two other games that aren't against Costa Rica because if they win both those games, even if they lost to Costa Rica, they should go through if the rest of my predictions come through. If they lose or draw one of those games, they would either have to draw or beat Costa Rica in Costa Rica. Not likely. We'll talk about it. Grenada, good performance. Bad to lose the win, but they fought hard. I knew they could shock some people with the way they play offense and don't play like a typical minnow. And they damn near pulled off a win, crazily enough. And there was a last second chance where they probably could have scored a third. Luckily for Trinidad, that did not happen. Goals were scored as follows. In the 25th minute, Miles Hippolyte will stand to take a pen during the play. Defender has his arm up. Ball's crossed into his arm right here. You can't raise your hand like you're in fifth grade class, have the ball smack off it, and think you're going to get away with not getting called a handball, even without VAR. Handball's given, handling in the box, off the arm. You can't do that. It was a stupid play. Penalties given. Denzel Smith goes the wrong way. Hippolyte goes the opposite way. Slots it home. Makes it nil one in the 25th minute. Great penalty taken by Hippolyte, their star man. You knew he was going to score it after seeing the way this game was going. The first 25 minutes, yeah, Trinidad had their moments. They did pin back Grenada for a while. But Grenada still fights hard. They're still a very good football team. And they love to attack and they love to push the ball forward. And if they let them do that, they can score on you. They've had good moments against the USA, Mexico, recently. They know how to play. And you just can't let them have their moments. Then in the 28th minute, this is a bad one. Denzel Smith punches the ball away into no man's land. Lands to Miles Hippolyte at the top of the box. I wouldn't even say lands. He hit it straight out of the air. What a hit. Volleys it into the net. Bangs it in to make it nil two in the 28th minute. What a shot by Miles Hippolyte. A golazo. A definite golazo. What a hit. You can't just punch it into no man's land with no defender on it. And he didn't even let that thing land. He just smashed it. He's like, might as well. Nobody's on me. Might as well. Boom. Because they were going for a second. They legitimately, three minutes later after the penalty goal, they go for a second. They're like, might as well. We have a shocking lead. We're not going to park the bus. We're going for a second. They got a second. And you're like, damn, they might just run away with this one. They don't, but would have been crazy if they did. 43rd minute, Ryan Telfer scores. Ball played into Telfer. He gets into the box. Nutmegs a defender. Keeper's coming out. Just chips it over the keeper while nutmegging the defender. Ball goes into the net. Ryan Telfer scores the first goal for Trinidad and Tobago, the former Toronto FC man, in this World Cup qualifying run. 1-2 in the 43rd minute. Good goal by Telfer. Could have scored a couple of minutes earlier, but he got his goal. Good for him. Good run, good play. Nothing too crazy. Good goal. Halftime, it is one to two. Grenada still has the lead at the half. And you're like, damn, they might win this game. Because for a while there, Trinidad was very shell shocked that they were down. And then after the second, they were certainly shell shocked. And they knew that they couldn't, they didn't feel like they could win this game or even draw it. Then they started to pick back up and get themselves out of the hole. Not completely, but at least they got back to earth level. Because in the 75th minute, Rion Moore scores. Ball played over the top. Perfect timing of the run by Rion Moore. He gets in there. Far post, or at the near post he is, with the ball. Takes a shot. Puts it into the net from the far post. And puts it past the keeper, Belfon, to make it 2-2 two two in the 75th minute. A laser of a shot, which is what they needed. Because Trinidad didn't play well in the second half. I don't think so. Grenada had their moments. Trinidad got forward as well, but their forward chances weren't quality enough. 
They had two really good chances that they scored. The rest of their chances weren't really quality enough. Belfon made some good saves. Overall, Trinidad sort of walked in feeling like their ish didn't stink, you know? And like, oh, we're very good on paper. We're a great team. We're about to turn a corner. We should win this game. We're at home, all that, yada, yada, yada. And in the end, they got smacked down. Yes, they still got a point. Is this still embarrassing? Yes. And they damn near could have lost in the last minute. But luckily, big save by Smith gets cleared. They hold on. It is 2-2 at full time. Luckily, full time stats, 16 shots to 17, 54% possession to 46% possession, 5 shots on goal to 6, 377 pass to 313, 76% pass accuracy to 74, 9 fouls to 13, 2 offside to 1. Two yellow cards to one, zero red cards to zero, four corners to two. Listen, Trinidad, y'all legitimately let them get a point. Nothing more, nothing less. Trinidad did not look good enough tonight. They did not look good enough tonight on the night to push this game forward and get a win. They should have easily, I wouldn't say easily, but with pretty much a little bit of fuss, but not much. They should have won this game at home. What they chose to do was put themselves in a hole and then dig out of it. Again, they did get back to earth level and they filled the hole back up. What you could have done was completely climb out of it and climb whatever you want to choose. Climb the rope, hit the bell, win the match. There we go. That's what you should have done. What you did do is you just got back to earth level and said, okay, I'm going to walk home. That, that's not what you're supposed to do. This was a winnable, very easily winnable match. Yes, Grenada's a very good offensive side for a minnow. They like to go forward. They don't just stand back and say, hey, we may lose this match or we will lose this match. Let's park the bus. No, they're like, yeah, we're probably losing this match, but you know what? That means we'll go out on our sword. And that's what they chose to do was go out on their sword. Go down fighting. And even then, they didn't go down because they drew. And honestly, they should have won this match, whether it's that last second chance, whether it's another chance in the first half. They kept putting chances forward, even when the game got closer and closer to a draw. 1-2. They still went forward looking for a third. 2-2, two, two, they went forward looking for a third, looking for a winner. That's exactly how you should play it if you're a minnow. Why be afraid? And say, hey, might as well just sit back and park the bus. We suck. We're not good enough. No, Grenada I respect because of the way they play football. Over the past two years, they fight. They play. They don't hack at people. They don't park the bus. They go forward. They play tough. Yes, they do. As, as tough as a minnow team can, but they go forward, try to score goals, and defend arguably well. Why can't more teams in this confederation do that? I think what truly would grow this confederation is if more teams do what Grenada does. Be like, yeah, we might lose against who we're playing. Yeah, well, we probably will lose, but let's try to go out fighting. All this hacking, hard fouls, parking the bus, defend till your freaking faces turn blue is not how this confederation grows. How this confederation grows is fearless players. You know what makes you better? Actually playing the damn sport. Play! Not just stand there and be like, okay, I'm going to be in the box for 90 minutes, kicking anything away as far up as to the freaking ozone layer. That doesn't... Teach you how to play. What teaches you how to play is in bad situations that don't favor you, you get goals. You defend well, but you get goals. There can be a simpatico here. Not every team can be automatically offensive. But not every team should be a dodgy, dreary, defensive team. That shouldn't be a thing. What it should be like Grenada, is you go forward, you fight for it, you lose, so be it, you weren't going to win anyway. But at least you could keep your heads held high when you go home with a miraculous point that maybe should have been three or a lose. Grenada has it right. 
They just do. I have lots of respect for that team. They have it right. They got some really good players. And maybe they can find a way to finish second in this group. A draw is a good start. Now, if my predictions are correct, they get a win and another draw. That would be four or five points. That wouldn't be enough to get second place unless Trinidad chooses to draw or lose to a team who is fourth or fifth and lose to Costa Rica. Possibly could be enough, but all Grenada has to do is focus on themselves, but they can win games in this group. They might just win the two against four and five, lose to Costa Rica because I think so, and draw Trinidad. Then that would be seven points. Trinidad would have seven, and you better hope the goal differential, if you're Trinidadian, goes your way. If you're Grenadian, you would hope it goes your way. Point being is, Trinidad did not play well enough to make a statement. They could have made a statement. Now the question is, do you fire Angus Eve? After all this, a lot of Trinidadian fans say he's only being carried by the players, the quality of players he can call up. Even though some of the wins they got in Nations League were with a seaside, with the quality he calls up, that's why they win. So the question is, fire him or not? There's a lot of Trinidadian fans that say a South American manager would be better. And I would agree. I think there's a lot of good players on this team. There's a lot of talent on this team. Tyree Spicer didn't even play tonight because Toronto said, hey, we got to keep him safe. He's got to rest his toe. Tyree Spicer is in this game? You win. I, I really think so. He's the rookie of the year in MLS for a reason. Or should be. And no, that's not bias. It's just true. He's a damn good player. He's playing like a number one pick. Tyree Spicer is a baller. A baller. And it sucks that Trinidad doesn't have him because I want to see him ball out. He's a damn good player. Damn good player. And hopefully in September for the Nations League, November and September, October, November, hopefully he can ball out. And hopefully next June he can ball out too for Trinidad. And hopefully going into World Cup qualifiers in the second half of 2025 in round three. Hopefully. But you got to get the job done win your second game this month and then push on to next year's June window and see what happens there. Question being, fire Angus Eve or not, I say, you know what, might be time to do it because these players are very talented. They need a manager who fits their talents. This is a bit disappointing, embarrassing, disappointing, embarrassing, whatever you want to put it. It is. I think this might be a sackable offense. A loss certainly would have been. A draw might still be, even though they came back but I think it's because of the talent of the players. Man of the match for me is Miles Hippolyte. Yeah, Grenada didn't win. Miles Hippolyte played a damn good game. Two good goals, great runs. I don't think anybody on Trinidad really deserves man of the match. Denzel Smith played questionably bad. Ryan Telfer scored a pretty elementary goal. Rion Moore, good run, perfect run, not much more. Honestly, yeah, I would go with Miles Hippolyte as man of the match. He's the reason why Grenada drew. I got to give him plaudits. With that being said, I think that'll do for the day. If you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell your friends, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, want to subscribe, send super chats on the live streams, comment on this video, put us to play this, share with friends and family, all that great stuff. I will see you tomorrow for a live watch along and review of Netherlands versus Canada, international friendly, live for the Central American Cup draw. At 5.30 on Thursday, I will recap both the Caribbean Cup and Central American Cup draws. Should be pretty easy. I won't talk about the positions, but I'll tell you what I think about each group of both tournaments. I will talk about both tournaments draws on Thursday, Friday, actually. Tomorrow's Thursday, Friday. And there you go. When I was supposed to have an off day, but, you know, how it worked out. But I will be live for the Central American Cup draw tomorrow as well. That's that. I'll talk about both draws, recap it the next day on Friday on my off day between matches, make the streams for the Saturday, Sunday, Mondays. And there you go. Or Saturday, Sunday, I think. With that being said, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Ron and I'm out. Peace. Trinidad, do better. Grenada, push on. Peace.